Good evening, this is Kevin from Uncommon Roots Homestead, and today we're going to be talking about canning. I will be showing you one recipe. I will be doing my world famous banana peppers. I'll be showing you that recipe and then also uh, some tips on how to can if you've never done it before. Um, I use a water bath canner as you can see here. You can get the whole water bath canning kit with all the uh, different accessories and things like that. A magnet to get the lids out and a grabber to get the glass jars out of the hot water. Um, you can get all that from Amazon for a pretty reasonable price. Um, so if you've never canned before and you're looking to start and try it, then I recommend a water bath canner. Um, it's a pretty simple, easy way to do it. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about it. So if you're like me and you're getting towards the end of the harvest season, um, you probably have a lot of things left to harvest. And for us, we have a ridiculous amount of banana peppers still growing. Uh, but they're all starting to kind of mature and about coming to the end of their life cycle. So we've got a ton of banana peppers ready right now, so I'm gonna can those. Um, now, for preserving, there is pretty much two main ways you can do that if you're gonna can them. You can do it through water bath canning, or you can do it through pressure canning. Um, there's two different uh, schools of thought when you are deciding which way to go. Um, First of all, water bath is probably the cheaper option to go with, but in order to be safe, there's some things you wanna keep in mind. Um, if you're gonna use a water bath canner, you need to make sure whatever you're canning has a pH of 4.6 or higher. So you need to make sure that there is enough acid in, that, uh, in the vegetables, fruits, jams, whatever you're making, there needs to be enough acid to make sure that you don't get botulism. So that can creep in and ultimately cause a lot of different health issues. Um, there's risk of paralysis and even death. So botulism is not something you want. So ideally, if you're gonna do a water bath canner, you need to make sure that whatever you're doing uh, has a safe amount of acid uh, inside of the cans. So for the sake of banana peppers, their pH is not high enough on their own to just put in there with water. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to add our own acid. In this case, I will be adding vinegar and salt, and um, those two things should allow it to preserve within the jar. So this is what we would call pickling. So we'll make a brine, we will get that going, heat it up, and then we will actually let the banana peppers sit in that brine and pickle, and that should be pl plenty of acid to actually um, keep them safe and uh, safe for consumption for your family. Okay, so now that I have all of my banana peppers chopped up, uh, what I will be doing is sanitizing my uh, ball mason jars. So I'm gonna take those and I'm gonna put them in boiling water. Now, if you are canning something for longer than 10 minutes, 10 minutes or longer, then you actually don't need to sanitize the jars ahead of time. Um, but if you are, are canning it for a, a time period less than 10 minutes, you do need to sanitize uh, before. Uh, my recipe actually calls for about 15 minutes of canning time, um, but just to be safe I like to do about five minutes of, of sanitizing in the boiling water either way. 
Um, so I have some half quart and some half pint jars that I'm gonna drop in the boiling water uh, once it's fully boiling. And that uh, should be good enough, you know, for five minutes of, of sitting time in there. Should be good enough to, uh, you know, disinfect and kill anything, you know, that would be harmful bacteria that could get into uh, your recipe. Okay, now that our jars are sanitized and the lids are sanitized, I will go ahead and stuff these jars with the banana pepper rings. Um, so I'll put those, fill those up to uh, probably about a half inch of headspace. And then once I'm at that point, um, I can make the brine and pour in the brine accordingly. Um, I'll tell you how much brine we need to make uh, in a second. Um, but first I will stuff these peppers into the jars and uh, then we'll discuss the actual brine recipe. Okay, so now I have my peppers packed into jars. So I've got two half quarts and two, uh, three half pints that I'll be needing brine for. Um, so I will go through the recipe on that. Um, typically for like a pint to a half quart, I will use about one cup of vinegar and one cup of water for those. So I've got two half quarts um, and then three half pints. So I'm gonna do about a cup and a half of water and then a cup and a half of vinegar. Um, so I will get that going now. Uh, once again, the reason that we use vinegar for pickling is because we need the acid. So uh, banana peppers don't have enough acid on their own naturally, so we need to add vinegar uh, in order to make a brine so that way they have enough acid and a, a high enough pH. So I've got a half, half cup here. I'm doing three half cups of vinegar, white vinegar. And then I'm gonna get three uh, half cups of water, or you could do one cup and one half cup. So that's all my, all my water and all my vinegar. So I've got that sitting in the pot here. Okay, I've got my salt and, or excuse me, I've got my vinegar and my water sitting in my pot. So now I need to add salt to this. I'm gonna do two tablespoons of salt or excuse me, two and a half tablespoons of salt. Now the salt that you use, you can really use anything. I use the pink Himalayan salt. Um, you can get it in bulk and like the taste of it. It's really a, you know, your preference. One thing I wouldn't recommend is using any kind of iodized salt. Um, ultimately iodized salt can change the color of your food. It's harmless but it could change the look of your canned uh, vegetables or pickles, um, your pickle recipe. It could get really dark and just not look very appealing, especially if you're going to end up giving these to anyone, you probably want to avoid that. So don't use iodized salt, but any other kind of salt, um, you know, sea salt, uh, Himalayan rock salt, those are all okay. Um, so in my brine, I like to add few different spices. So the main ingredients for a brine is gonna be your vinegar, your water, and your salt. Um, so everything else I'm adding is more for personal preference. Um, so this is how I do mine. If you wanna add something different, you certainly can, um, but these are the ingredients I like to add. Um, so I'll do a little bit of crushed red pepper in there. I have sweet banana peppers, but I like a little bit of heat in mine, so I'll add just a little bit of crushed red pepper to your taste, uh, to my taste. And then I will add a little bit of turmeric for color. 
Um, doesn't really add too much to it. I just do a little sprinkle in there, um, but it does change the color a little bit if you want it to look a little bit more like the kind you buy at the store without all the you know dyes and the, you know yellow number five or whatever they put in it, then turmeric's a good way to do that and change the color. Um, I will do about a tablespoon of garlic powder. You can use minced garlic. Um, you could even do whole cloves in there, but I'll do about a tablespoon of garlic. It's what I have on hand. We eat a lot of garlic, so I certainly like it in my hot peppers as well. Or excuse me, my banana peppers. And then the last thing I add is a little bit of honey. So to this recipe, I'll add about a tablespoon of honey as well. And give it a little stir. You can actually add some of those dry ingredients right to your jars. So if you wanted, you could put, you know, your crushed red pepper, um, some of those spices right in the peppers and then pour the brine over it. Um, there's not a lot of room. I've packed these jars pretty tight. So I'm just gonna put it all in the brine, any seasoning that I want, um, just right in the brine. So that way I can just pour it over. It doesn't take up any extra room, anything like that. So once we have that all set up what we're going to do is we are going to boil this um, just until the salt is all dissolved in the actual uh, brine and then once that's dissolved we can pour it over our peppers so my brine is good and boiling now uh, what i'm going to do is boil or excuse me pour the boiling brine into the jars of uh, peppers and then we'll close them up and then I'll show you how to can them. Um, so I'm just going to try and carefully pour the liquid into the jar. Now you want about a half inch headspace with this recipe. It's important to look at how much headspace your recipe needs prior to making it. Um, with these I need about a half inch. Uh, headspace is important uh, for the sealing of your jars. So make sure you have the proper amount according to whatever recipe you're using. Once again, this recipe calls for one half inch of headspace. So the headspace is the distance between um, your liquid and your peppers to the actual lid that you're putting on. So once again, you need a half inch in between the lid and your, uh, your brine and your peppers. So got about a half inch there. So I can go ahead and seal that one up. You want to seal it about as tight as you can without going too far, but just enough to where it's not going to loosen up in the hot boiling water. So that's loosened up. I'm going to do the same thing for all the rest of them. Um, and then I'll show you how to do the uh, actual canning. So I have to confide in you. After pouring out the liquid into the jars, I actually did my calculations wrong, which if you know me is not that surprising. So I will actually go ahead and uh, let you know that for what I used, I needed two and a half cups of vinegar, two and a half cups of water, three tablespoons of salt, a uh, tablespoon and a half of honey, um, and then also a tab uh, the tablespoon of garlic, which was actually enough. Um, I will actually post the recipe underneath this video as well, um, so that way this doesn't mess you up. But now we'll move on to the canning. Um, so this part is fairly simple. Um, so what you do after you have placed your brine over your, uh, your peppers in this case, you would place the jars into your boiling water that you've had boiling uh, for the canning process. So you'll go ahead and just grab your cans, throw them in the water gently, because if it splashes, it will burn. 
And you need to make sure that when you put the cans in the water, that the tops are covered with water. If they are not covered, you will not get a proper seal, which is the most important thing in canning, um, is making sure that you have that seal. So I actually need to add a little bit of water to mine. So I'll just fill up a little pot here. And put that in the boiling water. And it should continue to boil, so it shouldn't be a problem. So I'll place that in there. Now all the cans are covered. The half quart uh, cans were a little bit underneath the water line, so just a little bit of water on top. I was able to cover those. Now what we're going to do is let this sit for about 12 to 15 minutes. And then, and then um, you let that sit for about 12 hours on your counter. And as long as the can has uh, no bubble in it. So if you try to put a lid on initially, there will be a little air bubble in it that you can push, push down. So in order to understand if you have a successful can, you need to make sure that that bubble is pushed all the way down. Um, if you can actually like push it and there's still a bubble, you're getting that click sound, then your can is most likely not properly uh, canned. You can still eat it, you'll just have to eat it a lot sooner. You can't let it sit in your pantry, you most likely need to put that in the fridge. Um, and you can eat it for about you know three to six months, uh, but it won't last quite as long. So uh, once again, it's key to make sure that the, the bu air bubble portion of your lid has been pushed down and is staying down and sealed. So we'll let this sit for about 15 minutes here and then I'll tell you the next step. Okay, so the final step is to remove your cans from your water bath. I've got these tongs here and I will remove cans and just place them on my counter. And these cans are gonna sit on the counter uh, for about 12 hours. And that's how long it'll take to uh, know if you have the correct seal on it. So after about 12 hours of them sitting, you should know if, if you've got a seal, a little air bubble. You can see here, there's a little air bubble right on top. I don't know if you can see it or not, but right here. So that should pop down after that 12 hours. It'll most likely pop before then, but, and you'll hear it too. You'll hear a, a loud click come from the kitchen. That's what that is. Um, so that is pretty much it. So you just let these cans sit and then you'll know if they are properly sealed. If they are, you can throw them in your cupboard, uh, your pantry, and you can eat them for about a year. Uh, and then if they don't properly seal, like I said, don't waste them. You can still save them, put them in the fridge, um, you know, and eat them out of the fridge. That shouldn't be a problem. Um, so it's important to us to, to utilize the canning method. It's new to me. I'm still learning a lot, but it's important for us. Um, we've got a lot of things that, you know, would just go to waste if, if we didn't can them. So we want to make sure that we're good stewards of, of everything that we've grown and everything that we've been given. So canning is important to us. It's something that I wanted to make sure I intentionally learned more about. Um, like I said, I'm still learning. I'm not perfect in it by any means, but as long as you're doing it safely, um, you know, it can be a great opportunity to preserve the, the wonderful garden that you've grown over, over the spring and summer. So good luck with your canning. Uh, this is Kevin from Uncommon Roots uh, Homestead signing off.